Alright, I hope you got your parents permission to watch this video because this shit's about to be rated R. In 1492, Columbus and his crew sailed the open blue and brought back a shit ton of gold and silver. And because Spain wouldn't allow any other European country aside from Portugal to lay claims to this new land, pirates or state-sponsored privateers were commissioned by other countries to get in on the action. From the 14th century BCE to our modern day, piracy has somehow remained on the job market. No other era of pirates is more cemented in our psyche than the golden age of piracy. I'm going to use a fictional character to explain what one of these pirates would have seen and experienced at this time. We're going to call him Jake Spyro. Now Jake would have most likely been an indentured servant in French Tortuga whose contract had just ended. This left him with no money and very little chance to climb a ladder to success. So naturally, he took up the lucrative trade of piracy in 1670. He joins a crew, swears to a pirate code, and sets off to Jamaica, one of the premier pirate sanctuaries. Jake Spyro's first job with his crew is to cut logwood in Spanish territory. Now, logwood was a very highly valuable resource because of the dye that was held within it, and Jake makes pretty good money from it. He and his crew are then given permission by the Jamaican governor to raid and plunder several Spanish settlements and trading routes, technically making him a privateer with some amount of state credibility. The crew consists of some that were former navy, some former merchantmen, and some that just preferred a life of maritime adventure away from government on land. Before their mission, a hundred or so men held a vote as to who will be their captain. They would do this with almost every decision, basically making a pirate ship a type of workplace democracy. You damn socialist. Jake is picked because he has proved to be a good navigator with great charisma. They raid, they rumble, they tumble, and get away with the loot in the Spanish settlement. When they get back, Jake is relieved from his position as a captain until another mission comes and another vote is held. The loot is split evenly, except the captain, for his heroics, is given a small amount more. Then they head into town and drink away their earnings. But they got word that the British have signed a treaty with Spain recognizing British claims in the New World, gradually making piracy and or privateering illegal as the British just no longer needed them. Some took up French privateering and Jake with a few others began hunting pirates under commission from the Jamaican governor. Fast forward and Jake has fallen back into his old ways of piracy. It's the year 1700. Jake is old as hell and lucky to be alive as he survived many of the diseases that are common at sea. He also refused the pardon promises given to pirates who turned themselves in, as he wasn't sure if he'd have to give away his stolen loot. But the War of Spanish Secession was coming and that re-enlisted pirates into the military, giving Jake a stable job for the next 14 years. At the end of this war, Jake and the other pirates were again left without work. Public opinion of them was also changing, making it harder and harder for Jake to sell his stolen goods. He also realized that the sense of brotherhood began changing, as the war led to people gaining a sense of nationality, causing divides between crews that consisted of many ethnic backgrounds, and just overall, people were less willing to take up piracy. So to supplement his crew, he raids ships, particularly slave ships and uses the people to work on his own ship. Jake no longer had the excuse of fighting under royal authority as a privateer, so he really leaned into being a pirate. He begins flying the Jolly Roger before taking ships as a way of telling the people, I'm a pirate, we can do this the easy way or we can do this the hard way. At first, people tried to fight, and for this, Jake had to give out harsh punishment so that word would eventually get out and people would be less resisting due to the punishments that were given if they did. Jake had to get creative with how he tortured people. He would tie ropes around their nuts and hang them until eventually the rope ripped them off, or would take someone's guts and nail them to a post while making them dance and hitting them with a burning log till eventually they bled out and died. Yes, Jake is a fictional character, but these torture methods are not made up. These measures made it less likely for others to resist, saving precious time for more raids, which was necessary as the loot was shifting from less and less gold and silver to more and more 
commercial goods such as sugar and fish. But by 1726, yeah, he's like 80 or something, but he eats his vitamins and eats his spinach. Jake's luck had run out. He was already beginning to regret not taking the pardon as regular sea trading was becoming more profitable than piracy. He was captured off the coast of North Carolina by a privately funded ship by the Virginia governor. After his conviction, he spoke to the crowd during his public execution and told them of his wrongdoings. He then looked at the children in the crowd, told them to respect their parents and to not follow the same path as he did. Finally, he wished for God's forgiveness right as the floor beneath him fell and his life ended. And just as life faded from his eyes, so too did the golden age of piracy fade from the Caribbean. Poor Jake. He was the best pirate I have ever seen. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'm Tom Hanks, and I left my treasure buried at...